everybody. I should have started out, hey, hey friends, because that's usually how I start out. Um, I had some requests to actually talk to you guys about how our homeschool day flows. And so I wanted to do a very specific video about the flow of our homeschool day and how I'm homeschooling three children at different grade levels. Um, and then hopefully later in the year, I hope to do some super specific videos like, here's how we use Liberty Kids. Here's how we use the Tuttle Twins. But right now I just kind of want to do a general overview of how our day goes. Um, and I will tell you, every day is not the same, okay? When you have children, they have ideas. And when you live on planet Earth, no day is perfect no matter how much we want it to be. So I'm just gonna kind of tell you how our routine goes, knowing that sometimes the poop hits the fan. Actually, that's really high. If the poop hits the fan, I'm gonna be calling somebody for help. Um, and you just kind of have to scratch it. And the beauty of homeschool is sometimes when days are like, what is happening? You just take off and you go outside and you have a nature day, okay? Or you go on a hike or you go to the park or you go to a museum or you're like, no school today. That's the beauty of homeschool. And I was trying to, I wanted to do a video like this um, because this is actually where we do school is at this table, but I'm getting super washed out. So I think I'm gonna move over here just a little bit. Um, also, we're getting ready to paint, so. <laughs> I can't win! We generally try to start school around nine o'clock in the morning. So my kids are up by that time. They've had breakfast, they've gotten ready, they've been able to do their chores, they've been able to tidy their room and make their bed. And then by nine o'clock, we're all ready to go. And we start at nine and we do family Bible time all together. So we're actually using an amazing curriculum, which I'll probably go over later on its own called Apologia. It's the first one, it's called Who is God? There are several different volumes. Um, we've used several different Bible curriculums. I will tell you guys, this is a favorite of mine that I've ever used. I'm able to use it and customize it for Ruthie, who's four, all the way up to Annie, who's 11, and we all sit engaged together at the table. There's a junior notebooking journal, and then there's a notebooking journal for older kids like Annie, who's 11, and then for Eli, um, who's in kindergarten, I print him coloring sheets and he colors while we have our Bible lesson. So that takes us about 30 minutes and we sit at the table all together as a family and we do Bible time. We have Bible time again later in the evening after Barry gets home. We have a short devotional and prayer before um, we go to sleep. So once we're done with Bible, then we have reading time quietly because I will tell you sometimes I haven't been able to get ready. I usually haven't had breakfast yet. And so I use that time to actually put on my clothes and my face and grab a bite to eat. In 30 minutes, I can usually do all of that. So Annie, who is 11, and Andy, who is eight, they both have 30 minutes of reading time. They sit on the couch here in the living room and they have um, books that they read. Andy's reading through Encyclopedia Brown. Annie is currently reading through the Little House on the Prairie um, book series. During that time, Ruthie's usually playing learning games on the iPad, and Eli usually plays abcyaw.com under the kindergarten tab for 30 minutes, um, learning games, math games, reading games, spelling. He does that, and everybody is engaged for 30 minutes. And then, I actually have to set a timer. I set a timer, and then um, at that point, we all kind of divide up and Annie and Andy both do lessons on the computer. So Annie does science, math, um, and language arts, which is also spelling and writing on the computer. We, Annie uses teaching textbooks for math and then timeforlearning.com for science and language. And then Andy uses timeforlearning.com for math, language, and science. That's what we're using this year. We change it up usually year to year because that's just how we roll here in our house. Um, teaching textbooks is something that we've used in the past and has worked really well for Annie, who's a very artsy type of personality. So we'll probably keep that up for her because she thrives in it. So while they're on their computers doing their individual work, usually one of them's in my office and one of them's sitting here at the bar or outside. Um, if it's a nice day, Annie will sit outside um, on our covered deck. And Eli, set, Eli and I sit right here um, we're right there at the table. We do reading for Eli. He is working through the teacher child to read in 100 easy lessons. And then we just use a couple random um, 
books off of workbooks off of Amazon for math and copy work and uh, all sorts of those things he and I do some reading so we read through library books out loud and he and I just have some time there together um, I'm also at the same time alternating back and forth between three kids so Annie needs help Andy needs help Eli and so I'm not usually sitting with A Eli the entire time if he's copying I um, copy work I am rotating um, between the children who need me heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. If you look up at the night sky. So under that format and using that method um, and Ruthie's generally running around and playing or coloring or getting into something and I have to clean up. <laughs> Four year olds. Um, we usually school from about 9 to 12 and then at that point we still do extra lessons later we just do them in the evening after Barry gets home usually around the dinner time hour we eat dinner together we use dinner time as instruction time I also use lunch time as a time for read aloud so whatever we're studying for history I'll find little read alouds and I'll read them while they're eating lunch I try to use the tiny minutes here and there and kind of stretch our day out so that we're learning all day and not just in a four hour block of time. So in the evenings when Barry's home is when we watch and work on history, which we're using Liberty Kids on YouTube this year for history. There are 40 lessons and we do one a week. We watch the video and then we use that week to study the lesson that was the topic. You can get loads and loads and loads of worksheets, workbooks, printables for Liberty Kids all over the internet. Teachers Pay Teachers is a really good place to go to be able to um, get curriculum to go along with the free YouTube videos. I highly recommend it. The reason Barry and I are doing it with the kids is because we're kind of all learning together. I'm relearning stuff that I have forgotten from when I was in school. So we watch the videos together as a family. We answer the questions. We talk about it. We talk about it all week and we do supplemental worksheets. And then I'll also grab supplemental read um, reading books from the library to go with each week's lesson. Another one that we do at night together as a family is social studies. So we're using the Tuttle Twins um, series of 11 books, which when I purchased from the Tuttle Twins website, I also got their free PDF books that go with each book. So then in each PDF book are things like fun word games and word finds and crossword puzzles and pages to color and things like service projects, um, discussion questions, things to pull out from the actual books because the books are probably written on a second grade level and Annie is still reading that, them at 11. We all read the books, okay? So all of us are reading the books. Annie's reading it on her own. I'm reading it out loud to the others. And then we're using dinner time as a discussion for social studies and also to talk about um, the different topics that the PDF books pull out. It's a very conservative look at the law and um, government and our rights and those sorts of things. So we chose that. I will do a more in-depth video the farther along that we get through using that as a study. And then again, like I said, we do Bible again before we go to bed. So in the mornings, we're doing Bible time. The kids are doing their math, their science, their language arts. We're reading at lunch. And then later in the evening is when we're doing and alternating between social studies and um, history and then also working together as a family to do devotions before we go to bed that has just been what seems to work well for us because we really enjoy being a homeschool family and me not just being a homeschool mom so also spreading our day out just a little bit and doing some in the morning and some in the afternoon keeps us from getting that burnout uh, in the morning from doing a whole lot of work all at one time and that's what our homeschool year looks like right now with three in school and one crazy four-year-old so I hope that was helpful if you have any questions let me know I'm going to hopefully break out different subjects here and there throughout the year and do specific videos on those but for those of you who ask that's a look at our homeschool day thanks for coming along with me